Hey, so in this vi video, I wanna discuss the truth about really what's involved in marketing and growing an estate planning law practice. Hey everybody, I'm Paul Rambley. I've been an estate planning attorney since 1991. And so have seen it all, have done it all, just wanted to share with you some of the experiences, particularly in light of some of the things that you may hear and read and um, some of the people that you may talk to about, about what they perceive as what's required to build an estate planning practice. Too many professionals, marketers, um, experts, uh, too many people make it sound like it's easy to develop a business that constantly attracts new ideal estate planning clients. And let's define perhaps what kind of activity that might be. I'm gonna just for, for purposes of starting a discussion, your definition might be much greater or much lesser, but let's just say kind of a, a good number um, to have a, a kind of a constant flow of revenue and estate planning business is an estate planning attorney who gets 12 new clients every month. Now you can take whatever you perceive to be as your value per client, multiply it by the 12 to see what that kind of gross revenue number might be. Some of you may want that 12 number to be much higher. Some of you kind of feel like no way can you get to that, but that's, that's the starting point. Now the, the reality is it's, it's hard to build up a business that constantly attracts that ideal new business for a lot of reasons, a lot of competition, a lot of, you know, the way people get information these days online, um, a lot of, a lot of kind of know-it-alls and um, a lot of oh, uh, competitiveness and pricing. Um, uh, law, the lawyer profession is one of the least trusted professions. You know, at the top, you've got, you know, your nurses and your military offices and your grade school teachers at the very bottom. You've got your lawyers and your lobbyists. So we got a lot of stuff to overcome. And um, what's going on out there is, you know, I'm on the internet a lot. I'm on LinkedIn a lot. I'm on Google a lot. I'm on Facebook and um, YouTube. I'm, I'm seeing what other so-called experts are saying about what's involved to, to start a successful estate planning practice. I read one just this morning that said, buy my program and invest between 15 and 20 minutes each month and you'll have a successful practice. Malarkey. Saw another one, national organization. Download their uh, all important guide, three keys to launching a successful solo practice. Key number one, keep low, keep, keep your overhead low. Hmm, it makes sense. Key number two, become involved in the legal community. I'm not too sure if that's gonna do the trick. Key number three, educate yourself on law firm management. Understand how to set up your trust account. Understand billing software. None of that ever got anybody any clients. So hogwash to all of that. I could probably find another 10 or 15 that say, click this easy button and one, two, three, and you'll have a successful practice. Seen many of them where use our services to build a website and you'll have the practice of your dreams. All of that is BS. So what I wanna talk about is really what's necessary to build a thriving estate planning practice. The secret is there isn't one key secret. Um, and I know that because having done this for now more than a quarter of a century and having served you know, many thousands of people and having asked almost every one of them, why did you hire us? Um, how did you hear about us? What led you to pick up the phone and call me or our office? I've asked thousands of people that question. And if there was one thing that I um, could have done to you know, get all of that happen, I, I would have done it and I would have done it many times over. But the secret is it's, it's doing many, many, many different things well over a 
what some perceive as a long period of time, um, embracing the journey, realizing that it's going to take hard work, having some patience. That's really the key to building a successful estate planning practice. When I ask people, how did you hear about us? Why did you call us? How are we so lucky to be the ones that you're talking to about making sure your estate legal affairs are in order? I get many, 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 many different answers. And so the key is to position yourself so that all those answers they might give you, well, you've positioned yourself so that they can give you those answers because they experienced something that you did. So for example, I ask one person, they might say, well, my financial advisor suggested we call you. And then the next day I asked someone, they said, well, I'm here because I attended a seminar or speaking engagement that you had. I may ask another person and they said, well, I read your book that you wrote and it was in easy to understand terms and felt like it applied to us, so now we're here. Maybe somebody else will say, I Googled estate planning in my city and all of your stuff popped up. Maybe they'll say, Paul, you handled the, the legal affairs for my parents. Y'all did a good job, so here we are getting our legal affairs in, a, in order. Some Many others have said, Paul, I watched um, a handful of your YouTube videos, really good, kind of got to know you in those videos, know your personality, you spoke in layman's terms, and so here we are. That, my, and that in fact, is a, is a big one these days. Other people have said, Paul, I watched a webinar that you gave and, and felt like the kinds of things that you discussed on that webinar are what we need, so here we are. I've heard, Paul, I read some articles that you wrote or I read what I think is you know, some stuff on your website, probably a blog post article that um, you know where perhaps they read a story about um, or a case study that I may have written about and so they were in our office because it applied to them. Sometimes people say well my neighbor used you and they suggested that we come here so you hear that a lot. Um, people have come in recently and said Paul I listened to one of your podcast episodes and that really triggered us to come in. Heard the other day, Paul, I read your newsletter that you put out, and so that triggered us to come in. Paul, I saw some of your information on LinkedIn. I read an article that you wrote that was on LinkedIn. It felt like it was real helpful, so here I am. Paul, another lawyer, we were dealing with another matter, whether it was a real estate closing or some family law issue, and that lawyer suggested that we come here. Paul, I stumbled across your company's Facebook, your law firm's Facebook page, and saw that you had so much good material that had, you know, really valuable to us and felt like, um, you know, you were the right one for us. Paul, occasionally I get an email from you and I read through all those emails. Some of them are kind of funny and entertaining, but, um, you know, the email that I got two weeks ago was just perfect timing that really triggered us to, to give your office a call and get started. So. You know, I just went through about 15 different areas where people, you know, have have been exposed to something that we created and then they contact our office. And really, the secret is that most of the people who come into our office, they weren't exposed to just one of those things. It took them being exposed to several of those things prior to them actually you know, taking the action to pick up the phone, call this lawyer's office um, with all the you know, fears that are involved with that phone call and get things started. So you know, we've heard people say, you know, my, my financial advisor gave us a list of three names and then I went on the internet and your stuff, stuff popped up and I watched you know, 10 or 15 of your videos that were applicable to our circumstances and then I you know, signed up to get your newsletter, which I never got, but I got an email from you um, a couple of weeks ago that I felt was interesting. And, uh, and so you know, it took several exposures for people to then you know, kind of step up and say, well, let's, let's give, let's, you know, we're not getting any younger, let's go ahead and give this guy a call and get our legal affairs in order. The key behind all of these different um, pieces of content 
is number one, they, they must be valuable. So it's not good enough to put your name and number on, you know, a Twitter post or a Facebook post or a billboard. It just doesn't work in that area of estate planning legal services. You have to first give that prospective client some, some value. And then all of that content, number two, has to be authentic content. It has to be content that's in your own words, in your own personality. It won't work if you go to some third party service that, that you buy content from to put on your website or blog post or LinkedIn page. Clients are gonna see through that in a heartbeat and they're, know it's, they're gonna know it's not you. They want to feel like they you know, work with someone who is providing that authentic content so that they can start building that trust, building that relationship with you. So in the conclusion, I wish I could package, you know, um, three things up, put a bow on it, put them together and say, do these three things and you'll have, you know, the practice of your dreams. I can't tell you that, but I can also tell you, don't believe everything you hear or read or see from the so-called experts, whether they're attorneys or not, who want to give you an, an easy button or a magic pill that will instantly provide you with a lifelong stream of ideal client relationships. Some of you may be saying, wow, Paul, all those things that you mentioned, that, must, that seems really hard to have to put all of that together. Well, if you said it's hard, guess what? You're right. So, you know, we all know at, if we're estate planning attorneys, we know enough to know that nothing in life comes easy. It takes hard work, it takes dedication, it takes uh, organization, time management, thought, research, um, skills. So, but you do that over a long period of time if you just never quit and, you know, you have a schedule and you, and, uh, you know, you have fun with it and you embrace it then, and then you enjoy the process then in a matter of what seems to be like that over a long, perhaps 40 or 50 year career, it's, it's, not gonna, it's gonna take just a small fraction of that, of consistent activity to really build up that credibility and expertise that your prospective clients are looking for. So here's what I want you to do from here, just a couple of things. One, uh, comment. Um, I've said some things that maybe you don't normally see when you're Googling, how do I build my estate planning practice? You know, typically other vendors are gonna pop up telling you how easy it is for some fee to you know, build the practice of your dreams. I'm really trying to shy away from that and tell you it's hard, but I'm also trying to tell you it's doable um, with the right work ethic and uh, all those other things that we've been talking about. So first I want you to comment, wanna, wanna hear your opinion on you know, what was presented in this video, what your experience has been, uh, share with others, um, you know, you'll get back as long as you share your experience, positive experience with others. And then two, if you, if you like the video, just punch the like button and, uh, you know, we'll keep, you know, providing uh, additional, you know, niche topics that are related to help you really grow the kind of practice and, um, and have what you need to, to really do this thing right. So hope all that helps. Comments, likes, have a great day. Take care.